Okay, today we are playing Barbarian Attack. This is one of the games in the expansion Traders and Barbarians. A um, couple things that are different. There is no robber. <coughs> There's no development cards, regular development cards. There is a special set of development cards for the Barbarian's Attack game. There is no largest army. And then the different pieces in this game are this hex here, which is where all the knights start. There are the knights for each player, six per player. And then there are the barbarians. So those are the things that are a little bit different about this game. So we will quickly set this up as much as we can, but it's a little bit different setup, so we might have to walk you through parts of it. Okay. Okay. So, to create the board, you start with this piece here in one of the spaces. Then you're going to put the desert directly opposite from there. Now, these are the hexes that you're going to use for the outside ring. You're going to need two forest two fields, two hills, one mountain, and three pastures. And you can randomize those and you place them around here. The other thing that is very specific about the outer ring are the numbers. So Ryder's going to put the numbers on and he's going to start here in the following order. And I'm just reading straight from the instruction book. So starting here, writer, six, and then he's going to go around in the circle. So next is two, five, eleven, ten. After the desert is eight, three, nine, twelve, four. And we've played this one completely random. It does not matter exactly where those numbers go, as long as there is one of every number. That is what is most important. For the inner parts, these are the hexes that you use. You're going to use two forest, two field, two mountain, one hill and one pasture. And those will be placed in random. And the numbers that Ryder is going to put on are going to be completely random as well. So I take that back, I, I ended up with one extra here. And uh, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm actually going to take out one of the pastures. Okay, writer's going to put those numbers on randomly and uh, we're going to speed it up. Okay. So also to start, you're going to place one of the barbarians. You're gonna put one on the two, on the outer ring, the two, and you're gonna put the other one on the 12 in the outer ring. Okay, so that's where those start. Okay, so now we're gonna to roll to see who goes first. Me and dad tied. Mom's going first. Okay, so again, this is Settlers of Catan base game. 
So we're going to start with two settlements, two roads. So we'll pause the game while we place our settlements. So if you watched the caravans video, the barbarians are a lot like caravans, like the camels. They come out every time a settlement or a city is built. So we'll stop and we'll walk you through that. But basically, these barbarians come out when the settlements and cities are rolled and they're placed on the outer hexes only. If there are three barbarians, the number is turned over and that hex no longer produces. And you have knights to fight them off and you can capture the barbarians. And if you capture barbarians, they give you victory points. And there's also coins if you lose your knight there's coins that you can buy resources with. We don't have resources on the table. How did I not notice that? We better get those. So anyway, that's kind of the gist of the barbarian attack. And so we'll kind of get going here. We're going to speed up play and we'll stop when there's something specific to the barbarian attack expansion game. just purchased a development card same as the basic game one wheat one wool one rock difference of these development cards is you play them right away so I picked up the knighthood so I get to place one of my knights and I'm going to place him right there so once you have knights on the board and once you have rolled and I've built I get to end my turn by moving the knights. I can move my knights three paths. One, two, three. Towards the barbarians. So, and if you wanted to move two more, so move five spaces in total, you would just have to pay one wool for the extra spaces to move. Once your knights are moved, you go around, to see if there's any attacks that can be done. An attack would mean that you have one more knight than barbarians. So this hex is not ready to be fought off yet, neither is this one, so no fights will occur and my turn will be over. Okay, so dad just bought a development card and it is that he gets to remove a barbarian from the board and place it into his captivity. So once you have two barbarians, every two barbarians equals one victory point. So that's one of the different ways that you can get victory points in this game, the barbarians attack. And this game also, it goes up to 12 victory points. I just wanted to point out too, so that was the end of my turn. You do not have to move your knights each at the end of each turn, only if you want. So I'm actually going to keep my knight here until there's more knights that can come help him defeat that barbarian. Okay, so dad's turn is over. He moved his knight that he got. So now, like I said, you would go around. Oh. Right here, there are more knights than barbarians. Now, there's only one barbarian and there's two of us. So we'll have a roll off to see who gets to capture that barbarian. So I rolled a two. 
dead rolled a one, so the barbarian is mine. But as compensation, dad gets three coins. Now, next what you do is, it was dad's turn, so he's going to roll the die. And it was a four. So on here, there, on this hex here, you can see that there's the numbers. Four is one of the triangles. That's also a triangle. So, so as you can see, these ones here, if you watch the review of the kids, they explain it in a little bit more detail. We always just take our fingers. There's no knights on either of those edges, so neither of us lose a knight. Okay, so sevens, when they're rolled, remember there's no robber in this game. You still have to discard if you have seven or more cards. There's no robber to move, but you still get to steal from one of the other players. So I'm going to steal from Ryder. I know he's got a lot of cards here. Not more than seven, though. <laughs> just built a settlement. So that means that three barbarians are going to get placed. There. Dad can place them. Now they get placed on the three numbers that Ryder will roll. The first one is a seven. Now if it's a seven he will re-roll it and he got a five. So a barbarian's on the five. He rolls again. Seven, twelve, and eight. Okay, so had he, if you roll a seven, you roll again. Had he rolled a five twice, one of the barbarians would have just gotten thrown back into the collection. You do not place two barbarians on one hex in one turn. End of Ryder's turn. Again, you go around to see, and there's one attack ready to go. So those knights are me and dad. I win the barbarian. I now have a victory point. And dad gets three coins. So now Ryder's going to roll the die to see which knights leave the board. Six. Okay, so the orange knight leaves. But again, dad is compensated with three more coins. Okay, dad just built a settlement. So we're going to go place three more barbarians. So he'll roll the dice. Two. Two. Ten. Ten. Six. And six. Right here. All right. And then again, that's the end of his turn. Go around. There's no attacks and fights that need to be dealt with. So that's the end of his turn. Okay. So, end of my turn. I move my knight. So this one here can be, there's an attack here. It's only blue on the hex, so I automatically get the knight or the barbarian that is there. Okay, 
So dad upgraded to a city. <clears throat> so you also place three barbarians when you upgrade to the city. Seven. Seven, so he's going to roll a second time. Ten. Ten. Nine. 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 So, because he rolled two nines, we don't place this one. You don't roll again. He goes back into the collection. settlement and now he's rolling to place the barbarians and he rolled a five so now there are three barbarians so this hex has now been defeated so this means a few things one this hex no longer produces two this settlement right here has been defeated as well so we put it on its side that means that that settlement no longer counts its VPs it does not count towards that. Once this number is turned back over, the settlement gets turned up and it works again as well. The reason this one is not is because it's still sitting on two numbered hexes. So until these barbarians are defeated, this hex stays defeated. the treason card so he got to move some barbarians around which is why this one is now not conquered and his settlement is back to normal so now this these guys can be defeated but I just wanted to point that out because um, the cards can help you do that as well okay so now his turns over and again you go around these ones here there are two barbarians so both myself and Ryder will get a barbarian just because I have more knights than him doesn't mean that I get both. Two different colors, we each get a barbarian.
Okay, so that was a super close game. So Ryder over here built this last settlement to win Harbor Master plus the 10 points, but because it was conquered, those three points didn't count, so he was sitting at nine waiting for everybody to come help him unconquer it. And meanwhile, me and Dad were sitting at 11, just kind of fighting it out. Dad got a knight, took a barbarian, and has his 10 points. So he's got one, two, three for the barbarians, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And that's the game. Keep playing and have fun.